we're going to go from, from verse 1 through 11. And it says, As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you're doing this, say the Lord needs it, and it will be sent back shortly. So they went and found the colt outside in the streets, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing? Untying that colt. They answered as Jesus has told them to. And the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw the cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heavens. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. So here we have this amazing, amazing time of celebration, right? At the time, the people were celebrating what was known as Passover, their deliverance from Egypt, right? Their deliverance from the hand of, of an unruly pharaoh. And so here they are having this huge celebration. But now they had something else to celebrate. Jesus was coming to town. Jesus was coming in. And not only was he riding in to town, but he was riding in as king. Right? And so last year... I was able to break down this passage. And we gave meaning to the donkey. We gave meaning to the palm branches. We gave meaning to the song. And it was awesome. You guys loved it so much that Pastor Chris said, you're going to do Palm Sunday again. <laughs> so which I, I find that as a good thing. I find that as a good thing. And so usually when we celebrate Palm Sunday, we celebrate that triumphal entry of Christ. Coming in as King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Coming in as the Savior. Right? He would, he would come in, which would be an event that would set off a motion in a series of other events that would eventually lead to the salvation of all mankind. And it's a beautiful time of celebration. It's a beautiful time for us to be able to honor what Jesus did for us. Knowing that going to Jerusalem meant his crucifixion. Knowing that going to Jerusalem meant he was going to be crucified, mocked, beaten. But he went anyways. But this morning, I kind of want to talk about something a little different. I want to look at the eyes, look at the perspective of something different. I want to look at the people this morning, I want to look at the people and how they welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem. See, for us, we know the story, right? We know how the story goes. We know what's to come. But the people at that time, they didn't really know what they were actually celebrating. Even though Jesus, a number of times, had mentioned, hey, I'm going to die but I'll be back. People didn't, under, didn't, didn't, didn't really understand that, right? They didn't really grasp that concept. But when they heard that Jesus was coming, they knew that that prophecy meant that he was coming in as king. And so they welcomed him. They welcomed him into Jerusalem in many different ways. Let's look at the different ways that they welcomed him. First off, they welcomed him in by honoring his requests. In verse 3, it says, If anyone asks you why you are doing this, say the Lord needs it, 
and will send it back shortly. They went and found the colt outside of the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing in tying that colt? They, a- they answered as Jesus had told them, and the people let them go. This is probably the only request, really, that Jesus made for his triumphal entry. One of the only requests that he's ever made coming into Jerusalem. And the people had a choice. Right? It wasn't, it wasn't like anybody was forcing them. It wasn't like the people said, all right, look, you better give us this donkey or Jesus is going to come beat you up. Right? It wasn't like Caesar was coming up, knocking on the door, saying, I'm going to take this donkey. There was no real threat to them giving up that donkey. But they chose to welcome him by honoring his request. Jesus is asking for this. Jesus is asking that you will give up your donkey for him to ride in on. The people could have easily said, nah, nah, not, not today. Sorry, guys. I need this. I need this donkey. You go, go to somebody else's house. The people could have easily turned away the disciples and said, I'm sorry, I, I really need this. I really need this donkey. It, it's mine. We've, we've, been, we, we've been taking care of it since it was birthed. It's about ready to be able to do some manual labor for us. It's, it, it's about to bring us in some income. I, I, can't, I can't give it up, guys. I'm sorry. But they looked at the situation. They knew what was happening. They knew that Jesus was coming in to town. They knew that Jesus was asking this of them. And they said, all right, God. All right, God. You need this, I'm going to give it up for you. I'm giving this up for you. How else did they welcome Christ? How about by paving the way? In verse 8 it says, Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut from the fields. See, they began clearing the path for Jesus. They began, they began moving people out of the way, scooting others, travelers. You guys got to get out of the road. You guys got to move. You guys got to move. No, 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 I'm sorry. Everyone watch out. Everyone watch out. We're making a way for our king to come through. I need you guys to get out of the way. They were laying down their cloaks. They were laying down branches. They were honoring him by paving that way, making a clear path so that there was nothing stopping him, that there was nothing blocking him. There was nothing prolonging his entrance into Jerusalem. And as they began to usher people out of the way, and as they began to spread their cloaks and put branches down and making a path for him, You know, it kind of reminds me of the red carpet. We just had the Oscars, what, a few weeks ago? Right? Have you guys ever seen, like, the the live broadcast of, like, the Oscars or the Golden Golden Globes? Right? Music awards. Sometimes even music premieres will have the red carpet. They make a big deal about it. They set out this carpet. They set up little red ropes so you can't pass it. Limousines start to pull up. Doors open up. These important, famous people begin to step out. Light bulbs are flashing. Over here, over here. Who are you wearing? Who are you with? Right? They're, They're clinging on to every word of these famous people that come through. They're making it so that way they can get through the crowd and make it to the inside, make it to their seats. All the while, people are taking pictures, talking to them, asking them questions. There's people from different uh, TV 
stations or, or radio stations or whatever, asking them all these different little questions, interviewing them as they're making their way down. They're important people coming down. I guarantee you, if I were to roll up to a red carpet event in my Jeep and step out, people would be like, who's this guy? <laughs> like, I'm Eric. Eric, who? We don't know. You get out of here. and Take your Jeep with you. This is for important people. <laughs> right? I'm not important enough for the red carpet. <laughs> Aw, thank you, love. But they were making, if you think about it, this was the ever first recorded red carpet event. They were prioritizing the way for God. They were prioritizing the way for Christ to make his way into Jerusalem. They were pushing people out of the way saying, don't step on this. This is not for you. This red carpet is not for you. You guys need to move out of the way. Everyone step back. Somebody important is coming through. You need to make sure the roads are clear for him. See, they were ready to welcome and acknowledge Christ as king. Riding down this road made of cloaks and branches, palm branches. Making his way down this amazing red carpet that the people made for him. He didn't ask for it. He didn't tell anybody to do this. All he knew was that he wanted to get on a donkey and ride into town. The rest was up to the people. How else did they welcome him? How about with worship and praise? I love how it says in Matthew 21, verse 9, the crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. I love that song that we did this morning. I love that song. It's so beautiful. So beautiful. Singing out Hosanna in the highest. Once again, Jesus didn't ask of this for the people. He didn't command. He didn't tell. He didn't say, hey, you know, it'd be a really good idea if somebody started singing. Mm -hmm. Right? He didn't mention nothing. He let the people's hearts freely go where it wanted to go. And where did it go? It went into genuine and spontaneous praise and worship. People welcomed him in through genuine and spontaneous worship. Think about that. There was nobody on a stage telling them, all right, guys, we're going to sing this next song. There was nobody there handing out lyrics. All right, this is the song we're singing, guys. No, they just came together. And the song that came out was a song of salvation. Save us. It was a song that came from their hearts. Genuine and spontaneous praise and worship. They express their excitement and emotion without hesitation. I guarantee you they did not walk for a couple miles and went like, you know what, maybe we should start singing. No, they started it right away. They were so excited. Their emotions were bubbling up so much inside of them, that joy. Sing Christ the King Riding on a donkey as prophesied. And they didn't care how it made them look. They didn't care what people may have thought of them. They began to shout. They didn't, Hosanna, Hosanna. No, 
They shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. They begin to shout it out. There was nothing holding them back from expressing what was going on that day. It was a beautiful time. It was a huge time for things to be stirred up in the spirit, stirred up in their emotions, and there was only one way they could express that. How about spreading his name? They welcomed him into the city by spreading his name. Matthew 21, verses 10 and 11 says, When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered back, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. When he entered into Jerusalem, the people were confused as to why this big parade was going on. Who's coming? Who is this? This is Jesus. Y'all better know his name. And they were quick to tell people too. They were proud and excited to tell others who he was. They welcomed him by spreading the news of his, of his arrival. He's here. Sing along with us. Here, take my tambourine. I don't know if they had tambourines back then, but I can imagine they did. They begin to welcome God. They begin to welcome Christ, the King, Lord of Lord, Savior of the world. They begin to welcome him into the city. The only way they knew how. And let me tell you, that, that was more than enough for God. That was more than enough for the heart of God. Looking at these people, seeing where their hearts were, excited, proud. See, but it wasn't all sunshines and rainbows. Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem wasn't accepted by all. There were few there that didn't like it. So how did the Pharisees welcome Jesus into Jerusalem? Luke 19, 39 and 40, I love this passage. Every time we talk about Palm Sunday, I, I, this is one of my most favorite passages. It says here in verse 40, it says, Some of the Pharisees, sorry, verse 39, Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. They weren't having it. How are they welcoming Christ into Jerusalem? Skepticism? Ridicule, disgust. They weren't happy about the celebration. They weren't happy about how the people were uplifting Christ as king. They wanted to shut the whole thing down. If they could, they would have made everybody go home. But let me tell you something. There were more people than there were Pharisees that day. They couldn't, get a, they couldn't get a word in edgewise because the people were singing so loud. They had to come to Jesus directly. Rebuke your people. Teacher, rebuke these disciples. Tell them to stop. Tell them this is enough. They need to go home. And what was Jesus' response? This is beautiful, you guys. What was Jesus' response? I tell you, he said, verse 40, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. 
if they keep quiet, if they were to not ever say a word, the stones will cry out. You guys, I don't know how you, I don't know, I don't know how much you know how powerful that statement is. Because that's letting us know that God doesn't need us. I know it might sound harsh. God doesn't need us. But he wants us. He longs for us. If we don't welcome him in, the stones are going to cry out. I love that statement because it shows you how much God longs for our pure and open welcoming of him into the city, into our lives, into our hearts. I'll tell you one thing, I will never let a stone cry out in my place. I don't know about y'all, but I will never let us don't cry out in my place. Worship team, if you can make your way back up. You see, the people welcomed him. With a genuine heart, they welcomed him. People were so excited. They chose to welcome God into the city. And so I have a question for you this morning. How are you welcoming him into your lives? How are you welcoming him? See, they had no idea what was about to come. They had no idea the suffering, the abuse, the ridicule, the beatings. They had no idea that was about to come. And here's here's the real kicker. Some of those people that were shouting Hosanna were some of the same people that were shouting crucify him. Yet they welcomed him in. So how are you welcoming Christ in? And is your welcome, is your shout of praise, is it only when things are good? Are we honoring the requests he's asked of us? When God comes into our lives, when God comes into our hearts, he begins to see our lives fully. And he begins to take a look around and he begins to realize, you don't need this. You don't need this. You don't need this. And he begins to ask us, Remove this from your life. Remove this from your life. You don't need this. Are we honoring his requests? Or are we holding on to that donkey saying, no, God, I need this. Are we holding on to that donkey saying, God, I, 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 I need this to, to, to help bring in more things that I need. Or are we saying, okay, God, here, take it. It's yours. I guarantee you that those people that let that donkey go, even though the disciples said, hey, we'll bring it right back, I guarantee you they said, look, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Let God do what he needs to do with it. Have we paved a way for him? Have we prioritized him in our lives? 
Have we put God first? Do we give him the red carpet treatment? Or is he sitting back behind the ropes while we walk the red carpet? Is our, is our worship genuine and spontaneous? Or do we just lift our hands up on a Sunday morning, on a Wednesday evening? And lastly, are we spreading his name? Are we spreading his name everywhere we go? Or do we only spread his name while we're inside of these four walls? I know this morning may seem like I'm coming at you a little hard. See, but if we didn't ask the tough questions, would we even really be your pastors? We're going to be getting ready for communion pretty soon. Not only that, but we're going to be getting ready to celebrate and to remember the amazing thing that Christ did for us on that cross. The resurrection, the tearing of the veil, bringing us into the presence of God, allowing us to be face to face with our Creator. I know these are tough questions to mull over, but these are the things we really got to think about. And so we're going to have a time just of reflection. The worship team is going to be playing. And I want you to think about how you are welcoming Christ. Your day-to-day, -day, what does that look like? Pastor Don and I were reading a devotional this morning that we wanted to share with you. 
ties in with all of this. It says, the next day John saw Jesus coming toward him. He said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John 1, 29. And in this uh, devotional, she says, growing up as a preacher's kid and now married to a pastor, I often say that Palm Sunday is like the final NFL game, playoff game, and Easter Sunday is like the Super Bowl for pastors. How will you tell the greatest story of all time in, in, a, in a fresh way? What can you include in your message that would convince people to surrender their lives to Jesus? Besides being in ministry, my husband and I are also dog breeders. Several years ago, a Rhodesian Ridgeback named Nala gave birth to six pups. But Easter Sunday, the puppies would be almost eight weeks old and ready for their forever homes. As we talked about the ideas for my husband's Easter sermon, we thought about how the lamb for the Passover had become like a pet to the family. We couldn't imagine what it would be like to slaughter one of one's family's pet. So I suggest that during his Easter message, I could bring in one of the puppies as a sermon illustration. It wasn't a lamb, but it could help him make the point. He agreed, so he chose to pick of the litter, the one that would sell the top dollar. And as expected, the congregation was moved by the illustration, and many people were saved that day. And as Christians, we're all familiar with Palm Sunday. But did you know that in the time of Jesus, the Sunday before Passover was Lamb Selection Day? In other words, it was the day that Jewish families would come to the temple in Jerusalem and choose their perfect lamb for the Passover. Then the family would bring the lamb home to live with them, knowing that within a few days their new pet would be slaughtered for the Passover meal. So when Jesus entered Jerusalem on Lamb Selection Day, it was as if he was presenting himself to the people and asking them, will you choose me? And Jesus wasn't just riding through the streets for attention. He had a destination. And as the Lamb of God, could it be that Jesus was headed to the temple to present himself before his Father to be approved for sacrifice? As Jesus approached the city, his disciples began joyfully to praise God in the loud voices for all the miracles they have seen. However, when the crowds joined in, the atmosphere changed and became more like a political rally. The people shouted, Hosanna, and they waved palm branches. The death and resurrection of the Messiah, author and minister Ray Van Der Laan writes, Hosanna meant, please save us, give us freedom. We're sick of these Romans. They waved palm branches, a symbol that once had been placed on Jewish coins when the nation was free. The branches did not symbolize peace and love, as Christians usually assume. They symbolized Jewish nationalism, an expression of people's desire for political freedom. And for the second time in Scripture, Jesus wept. Luke 19.41 Lamb of God was there, the only one worthy to be slain for the sins of mankind. Yet the people only wanted a political deliverer. What will your response be on Lamb Selection Day? Will you choose Jesus as the perfect Lamb? Will you believe in the power of the Lamb's blood, which is able to take away your sins and make you truly free? We appreciate the message today, and, and, and as we go, we, we celebrate Hosanna, Hosanna in the heights. Because what this meant, that Jesus was coming to be that perfect lamb that was slain for all mankind. And scripture says, for I have received the Lord, which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he is betrayed, he took bread. And when given thanks, he break it and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Jesus became that perfect lamb. And in the Old Testament, as we just discussed, had to find that perfect lamb. Well, aren't you glad that Jesus is a perfect lamb for all eternity? Amen? Amen. We're so glad that 
you went through the pain and the shame and the sorrow for us. And as we think about that, think about how Christ came not to conquer Rome, but something much greater. Let's worship him now. Lord Jesus, thank you that you gave your body broken for us. Lord, we remember you, we honor you, we worship you. Lord, we do not take this lightly. We worship you, Lord Jesus, through this. Amen. Let's partake of the And it says, after the same manner, he also took the cup, which he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he Each and every day, we should just honor God and recognize the wonderful things that he has done for us. First and foremost, that he died on the cross for us. His blood was shed for us. So that we can be forgiven. He paid the price for us. That in itself, we should want to honor him, to worship him, and to praise him uh, until the day he comes. And so that could be a wonderful day when we see him face to face. Amen. And you know, by his stripes we are healed spiritually, which gives us the hope of eternity. But by his stripes we can be healed physically, and Jesus is the answer to all of our prayers. How many of you know that this morning? Amen. And maybe this morning you felt the challenge of this prayer today. Maybe this morning you, you are sitting and you are dealing with trials in your life, maybe physical things in your life, but you just need a touch from God today. We're going to partake of the juice which represents his blood. But before we do, if you just need prayer this morning, I want you to just go ahead and stand up and say, I need a touch from God this morning. Let's pray and believe that God's going to minister to you. It may be physical. It may be a spiritual need. An emotional need. But let's give it to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. Lord, we just thank you that of you shedding your blood for us. That, Lord, it was almost like going in in victory and honor. But, Lord, you knew the hearts of the people. And you knew what your, what your purpose was. You went to the point you wept at the garden because of the big price that you were going to pay. But we thank you, Lord, that your blood was shed for us so that we can be here today worshiping you and praising you, that we have the hope of all eternity. And, Lord, we just thank you that because you walked on this earth, Lord, you know our hurts and our pains and our emotions. And, Lord, you know you've experienced everything we've experienced physically, spiritually, emotionally. There are people that are standing up today and saying, Lord, I do need to honor you and to worship you. And Lord, I need you first in my life. Lord, we pray that you will give them strength to, to do that and to have that victory. Lord, for those that are going through emotional struggles today, Lord, that are going through battles, Lord, we pray that you bring peace into their hearts, joy into their hearts and lives, Lord Jesus. Give them a sound mind, Lord, that, that you are in control. Lord, for those that need a physical touch, Jesus, you made the lame to walk, the blind to see. Lord, you raised people from the dead. And just as you healed back then, you were the same yesterday, today, and forever. And you are in the healing business today. And so, Lord, I pray that you will touch people's lives today. Those that are here that are struggling physically. And, Lord, those that couldn't make it today because they are struggling physically. We pray for healing in their lives. And so, Lord, we honor you and we praise you. Thank you that you can meet our every need, physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, whatever it may be. Lord, through you, we can make it through every trial, every temptation. We just thank you, Lord. We thank you once again, and we praise you, and we honor you in your name. Amen. Let's partake.